One of the things that has plagued us UI UX designers for millennia is the inability to perform photo compositing, photo editing, photo manipulation, whatever you want to call it, in our UI UX design apps like Figma, Sketch, Adobe XD, whatever. Uh, but that has changed today with a plugin called Photopea. All right, so Photopea is basically a Photoshop clone that you can run in Figma itself, which is crazy. So today I'm going to show you exactly how to use this plugin uh, in order to adjust and manipulate photos as you wish and add cool effects and all that. And yeah, I think it's really awesome. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022 and that will give you 22% off at checkout. Alrighty, here we are with a brand new document, no frame or layout in Figma. Let's go ahead to the frame tool and choose desktop. Um, and really it doesn't matter the size because we're not designing an actual layout. We're just checking out the photo editing abilities of Photopea. So um, we'll take the rectangle tool in order to give us a place to put an image. Um, with a selectable, right click and choose um, Unsplash. So make sure you install the Unsplash plugin. Just lets you choose uh, a bunch of cool different photos. I'm gonna type bird. Let's choose that one right there. All right, so really cool picture of a colorful bird right here. Um, and what we'll do now is with it selected, so you, in order to run the plugin, you gotta have an actual uh, photograph selected of some sort, all right? And it can't be like a group that's selected or anything like that. Um, so you know you can use it as long as you have a fill with an image over here and you're all good. All right, um, so let's come up here to this area right here. And with uh, plugins selected up here, type in photo P and run, all right. So this is what's crazy. When I first saw this UI, I'm like, wait a second, this looks almost exactly like Photoshop. I, and it, it pretty much is. Um, and so you're still inside of Figma. The Figma UI is up here, but we have this photo P Photoshop embedded layout right here in the middle, which is crazy. Look at all the tools. It's like the same tools as full fledged Photoshop. It's crazy. All right. So you can see up here, there is an account section. Um, and so we have a free thing. It says all features. Um, so you get all features with a free account, uh, which is really cool. And then there's a premium with just no ads. So there is a bar on the right with ads. 2X more steps in history and quick email support. It's only 333 per month. So you could just get a year or two and like you'd be done with it if you don't wanna see any type of ads. I don't see ads right now, but I did see them before. All right. So if you're unfamiliar with Photoshop, I, it's a robust application. Um, it, it's a primarily a raster-based application and its primary, its original purpose was, of course, to allow you to edit photos, uh, do photo compositing or photo manipulation, um, things like that. Uh, of course, for a long time, because we didn't have other software, we used Photoshop for web design and, and stuff like that. Um, but really its strength is in photo editing. So the very basic thing that you can do over here, and I could just give you a real quick overview of the UI. Um, over here is all your tools on the left, all right? And there's many of them. You won't need to use most of them, honestly. Um, there's the menu up at the top, and there's a lot of different things. Uh, we'll, t we'll check out a few of them. Um, for instance, it's filters that you can add. You can add, you can blur things, you can, and there's a lot of different types of blur uh, presets 
I there's a, a motion blur, a Gaussian blur. So for, for some reason, maybe you had a car photo and you're integrating in your, your website layout and you wanted to add maybe a little bit of a blur, a motion blur or something. I With that layer selected, we can just blur the crap out of this thing and make it look cool. Maybe maybe it's something you wanted to add. You don't have to open up Photoshop or another external piece of software. You can just use Photopea and there you go. So there's a lot of different filters that you can apply things that you can't obviously do in uh, Figma itself or other just UI UX design software. Uh, so you can render clouds in here. So you can just play around with this stuff. Um, over here under image adjustments, you have brightness and contrast, levels, curves, exposures. Now, Adobe, uh, not Adobe, sorry, Figma, or I should say Adobe Figma, uh, does give the ability when you have an image selected to adjust things like exposure. Um, there's probably like 10 different things that you can choose, but this is like that on steroids. It gives you a, a more options and, and other stuff. So um, like for instance, if we wanted to make, I, honestly, I think this, this picture looks fine, but just for, just for, I guess you could say shits and giggles, we could say hue and saturation, you know, we can change the hue, which looks terrible. We should leave it right there where it was. Uh, saturation, grayscale it. You can't do this in uh, Figma itself. You can do this uh, or this, but you can't do this just to desaturate something slightly. Uh, lightness, all that good stuff. All right. Um, one of the really cool things that you can do here is, um, let's see here. Let's take, and this is a concept I'm going to teach that's real important. Um, you, we have the dreaded uh, pen tool down here. So the pen tool um, comes in two different modes. Uh, we have shape and path right up there. Uh, we're gonna choose shape and it will create kind of like almost like a quasi vector sort of situation where it's not gonna be rasterized into uh, pixels unless you flatten it and you already rast rasterize it. Um, but this gives you the ability to do things, you know, maybe something that's like a little artistic and I'll show you why it's kind of cool in a second. Let's like do something like this. We could change the fill up here, get rid of that. And then we'll add a stroke. Um, we'll make the stroke white. All right. So now looking at this, selecting off of it, like on the move tool and then just actually just selecting, um, the different background layer, I. You can see it's a shape layer. It's not necessarily um, rastered. Now, with a shape layer, you can't do things like uh, destruct, like uh, de you can't do destructive things, as it's called, uh, destructive editing. So, what do I mean by that? Let's say, for example, I want to take the, let's see, our eraser tool right here, and let's change the size, the hardness all the way down to zero, uh, the size up quite a bit and it'll be a soft a brush, all right? So let's say we wanted to like fade the end of that little line that we did. You can't do it because this layer is not editable. That's what that little pop-up showed. So right click, we choose rasterize. Now that it's rasterized, we can no longer have a, the ability to edit that, that stroke. Uh, you saw that blue outline that lets you know that if you choose uh, the, what's it called down here, the, the direct selection tool, um, you, we would have been able to, to take those anchor points and move them around. We can't do that anymore, but now what that does, rasterizing it, it allows us to do destructive editing. So let's make this brush a little bit bigger, you know, maybe like this. Now we could do something like that. Certainly cannot do this in Figma at all. Um, and so we could just do that a couple more times. It's, it's good to get to understand this 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 key concept, maybe coming off this wing, maybe starting down here, we can go, let's see here, down here. All right, there's one. And again, it's just gonna remember our settings from before, and we'll do that little fade thing too. Um, maybe coming off this shoulder, maybe starting right here. Uh, we'll go right there. And we'll do one more just for the fun of it. Okay, so we can take all these layers here. Uh, let's not take that one, it's already rasterized. We can right click rasterize layers 
And now we can select this layer right here and we'll do the same thing, uh, It's just because it's fun. There we go. We'll take shape three, where is that one? Right there. Oops. Just control Z to edit undo. And we'll take the last one, shape two. Like that. All right. Now, one of the really awesome things that you can do is photo compositing, and, or sometimes referred to as photo manipulation. Um, I did a whole course on photo manipulation, but that's a, that's a thing like where you could take two photos and kind of, or two or more rather, or, and, and merge them in some unique way and really change it. So like, let's say for instance, we wanted to have a mountain background. Like we, we have a picture, we want to edit it in some way to, to include something uh, or change something. Um, here's how you do that. So what we can do is um, at this point, what you can do is you can save this as an actual PSD um, I'm going to save this in my desktop. I'm just going to call this bird. Now, before you um, exit here, by the way, there's the ads. <laughs> um, make sure you hit Control S to save this, and then it's going to update in Figma itself. So here it is. We can see the changes in Figma right here, which is awesome. Um, all right, so let's let's. Um, Let's go to, uh, in our browser, unsplash.com, and there's a reason I'm doing it in the browser rather than in Figma, the, the Unsplash extension. Um, I'll tell you in a second. But let's do a search for mountain. All right. Um, yeah, let's maybe, uh, let's do this one. It's a real popular one. Let's go ahead here, and we're going to download the medium version. All right, it's right there. Let's show that in folder that's on my other desktop. And we're going to then go ahead and select this, our original picture, choose photo P and run. All right, and then we're gonna go into file and we're going to open, oh, sorry, open in place. And then you go ahead and choose the image that you just downloaded. Let me go to downloads right here. I think this is it. There we go. So now we can see it's right here. We can scale this up, by the way, holding Alt to keep the uh, aspect ratio. So if you want it to be bigger or whatever, you can. And now we have it placed. Now, <clears throat> the thing that makes this tricky is we want this to be, be behind the bird. So select your background layer and you have several options. So this one's a little bit more tricky to, to probably cut out automatically. Um, so we may have to do some manual work at, thereafter. So if we come over here, we'll see we have the um, magic wand, the quick selection tool, and the object selection tool. And depending on the actual photograph, I, if you have an object that you wanna cut out, use object selection tool if it gives you the desired result. Now this is gonna be difficult because this is, there's a lot of variation in the color of this bird. So if we just select the bird right here, we'll see that if I zoom out, you see the little marching ants, which are not marching. Um, it's not selecting the wings. So that's a little bit of a pain in the butt. I wouldn't use that tool for this job. So um, we control D to deselect. We could just use the magic wand tool because the background is pretty much uniform, this uniform dark uh, bluish color. So with about a 30 tolerance right there, um, we could select the background and select. The, now, here's one problem right here. If you select this background, you hold to shift, it's gonna select too much of the bird down here. So really, if we only want it up above here, this is fine. Um, and I think that would work just fine. So now, um, if we have this this bird, uh, or this, this graphic right here, let's go ahead and deselect everything with Control D. Um, I'm gonna take the opacity, turn it down just a bit. Actually, I kind of like the placement of this already. Um, so what we could do is take that real quickly again. All right, and come over here, select the mountain, and then choose Add uh, Raster Mask. All right, so now that doesn't look that great. Let's boost the opacity up all the way. That still does not look good. Um, and we could take the you know, this is a destructive kind of workflow. There's other ways to do this. Um, I'm just kind of working fast here. We could take our hardness all the way down, our size up big time, like 
let's see, maybe like 900 or so. We can rasterize that. You do something like this, let's see. All right, and then the background, I, you know, we could play around with the image adjustments. Uh, things over here, like hue and saturation, maybe desaturate it quite a bit. We also have layer blend modes as well right here. So we can just kind of cycle through, select one, and then use your keyboard down arrow key. And then you may fall upon something that you kind of like. That one's pretty cool, color dodge. This one's cool, exclusion. Exclusion usually doesn't yield great results, but I kind of like this. Um, and then we could take the opacity, decrease it just a bit, and there we go. We have something that's very subtle with some mountains in the background. Um, so as you can see, very powerful. Uh, let's go ahead and save this, and then we can exit out, and there we go. We have our manipulated and photo edited uh, photograph here essentially where we didn't have to leave Figma one bit. Awesome stuff. All right, everybody, really awesome. I know for sure this is a plugin that I would regularly or will regularly use so that way I don't have to switch to a different app. Uh, I already do have Photoshop, um, but just running it right in here uh, just prevents me or allows me rather uh, just to keep up